Ansela, I'm from Tafwa, and I love to listen to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Ulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News Tonight. Directive given to prioritize water projects in the north as water cutting is costing government too much. Violence against women, a health pandemic, says EU. And assurances of no more technical disruptions for sugar mills next year. Commissioner Northern's office has been directed to prioritize water projects in the Motherwatha region as it is costing too much money to cart water. As Eleanor Thurangai View reports, water shortage continues to be a major problem for communities in the north. Water cutting continues in the northern division with Motherwatha receiving the bulk of the water supply. The prolonged drought has seen communities request for cartage as water sources are drying up. For the whole of uh, the Northern Division, Madhuata needs to first prioritize the water projects because this is taking a lot of uh, their development money, uh, delivering water during dry spells. Permanent Secretary for Rural and Maritime Development, Mele Timbani Marama, says thousands of dollars is being used by government every year for water cutting. Just for the period of January this year before Cyclone Winston struck, the whole of the Northern Division took a chunk of uh, 300,000. That was for the month of January, before Winston struck. The Commission Northern's office has been directed to see to it that all water projects earmarked for this financial year are implemented. Implement water projects and then we save that money for something else. So we can go on to housing. So the more we save from here, we can implement on other projects. Mbani Marama was in Vuno level earlier this week to visit the staff of the Commissioner Northern's office as well as visit sustainable projects in the Madhuata province. Eleanor Turangaviu, FBC News. Violence against women takes a toll on households and national budgets through loss of income and productivity. European Union Ambassador to the Pacific Andrew Jacobs says there are women and girls who continue to be physically and sexually abused within their homes, societies and online. Kelly Vavala reports. Gender inequality is the root cause of violence against women in the Pacific and about 60% of them face violence from their intimate partners. Women and girls are still being beaten at home, sexually and economically exploited, assaulted in the streets and at work, harassed online or while playing sports, raped mutilated or forced to marry. According to Jacobs, a $15 million discussion is underway to fund three objectives of the regional indicative program that looks at human rights, gender equality and civil society engagement. UN Women Representative Dominic Maidman says violence and abuse devastates lives, causes untold pain, suffering and illness. We know that the root cause of violence is gender inequality and we know that that gets expressed through um, beliefs around men and women and their traditional roles and through um, beliefs that violence is acceptable in certain circumstances. Today marks the International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women. Andrew Jacobs says violence against women is a violation of human rights, a public health pandemic and a serious obstacle to sustainable development. Kelly Bavala, FBC News. The Marama Natui Lambasa and the Salinia Tatui Lomaloma Ngomate Ritova was laid to rest this afternoon at their chiefly burial grounds at Nasekula village in Lambasa. Women lined the footpath as her casket was carried through the village one last time. 
And the Salinieta Tuilo Maloma Ngomate Ritova passed away at the Lambasa Hospital last Thursday at the age of 48. She held the title of Tui Lambasa since 2002 and is survived by two sons. A government delegation led by Minister for Agriculture Nia Seruratu also turned up to pay their last respects. Technical faults at sugar mills have proven costly for the Fiji Sugar Corporation, lowering its productivity considerably. Permanent Secretary for the Sugar Ministry, Yogesh Karan, says they're doing everything to ensure no disruptions during the next crushing season. Savaratumbo reports. The Sugar Ministry is working closely with every stakeholder in the industry to ensure more positive results in 2017. Permanent Secretary for Sugar Yogesh Karan says 2016 has been a tough year for the industry and all preventative measures have been explored to allow for a smooth and more productive year next year. It has been a year uh, that uh, didn't really meet the expectations in terms of all areas. But it's not too bad either. And uh, I hope that uh, given the difficulties we have faced, particularly the area uh, hit by Cyclone Winston, uh, that next season would be a good one. Farmers have been advised to make the most of the current conditions that are idle for sugarcane farming. There has been good rain as well, so the climate is good, and uh, we have encouraged them to take advantage of this. And um, next season, we should have good, very good production. According to Karen, the Lambasa mill produced the largest number of sugar this crushing season. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Four people who were remanded by the Nasino Magistrates Court yesterday for charges by FICAC in relation to an alleged scam involving the legal issuance of driver's licenses have been released on bail. They are Land Transport Authority officers Rajnesh Prasad and Mano Naitala, along with former LTA officer Ranjina Hicks. Also released on bail today was Frank Whippy, who is alleged to have benefited from the scam. Other alleged beneficiaries who were released on bail yesterday are Muhammad Yunus, Manoj Kumar, Jerry Nand and Jitendra Prasad. It is alleged Rajnesh Prasad and Naitala, along with Hicks, issued a license certificates without following the right procedures. Prasad was charged with one count of bribery and one count of general dishonesty and obtaining a gain and corrupt transactions with agents. Naitala and Hicks were charged with one count of general dishonesty and obtaining a gain. The eight will reappear on the 9th of January 2017 for a plea. Those assisted under the free water scheme will need to pay if their water usage exceeds the allocated amount for each household. Water Authority of Fiji Chief Executive Opetai Ravai revealed this to FBC News in response to complaints from customers that they've had to pay their bills despite being told the water was for free. Ali Kimbia reports. The misconception surrounding the free water scheme has been clarified by the Water Authority of Fiji. Uh, what we need to understand uh, is the free water is an allowance to a certain limit. Uh, it's 23 units per household per quarter. So which means uh, if you break it down on a daily basis, it's about 50 litres per person per day. The scheme is for families earning a combined income of less than $30,000 annually. FBC News spoke to some consumers who claim they were not aware of the limitations. The customers, they thought that the water will be free for all. They don't have to pay anything. Many people in Fiji, they think that a free water scheme is really free. I think it is free because it is a free water scheme. Rabai says there is also a time limit for the assistance. So if your household income goes above 30000 then you should not or you do not qualify for the free water allowance anymore. That is why the time limitation is there for them to reapply. Close to 25,000 families are currently being assisted under the free water scheme. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, Vanua Vanu Geospatial Information System launched and women told of their key role in fight against NCDs. Stay with us. Hi, my name is Liviana Valentine. I'm from Nandi and today FM rocks. My name is Ateva. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Chris. I'm from Tava. I like listening to Big Breakfast. Today FM rocks. <laughs> 
Hi, my name is Chelly. I live in Arere. Today, FM rocks my drug and lollipop. Bula, my name is So. I'm from Navua. I like listening to today's FM. Bula, my name is Asilika from Rocky Rocky, and today FM rocks with my flip flops. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. This is FBC News. A 45-year-old man has been sentenced to 12 years imprisonment for raping a 12-year-old girl in Nandi. High Court Judge Justice Aruna Luthke says the rape of children is a very serious offence indeed, and it seems to be very prevalent in Fiji. The man who was the 12-year-old girl's neighbour raped her in front of her younger sister and then threatened her not to tell anyone. He later visited the victim and her family seeking traditional forgiveness. The man has been sentenced to nine years without parole. The Geospatial Information Management Council today launched the Vanua Geospatial Information System. Geospatial information is information describing the location and names of features beneath, on or above the Earth's surface, including aspects ranging from general terrain and mineral resources to population centers. While launching the Vanua GIS, Minister for Lands and Mineral Resources Fias Koya says, this is a first of its kind in Fiji, integrating data sets from different organizations, bringing it all together in one place. Sainiani Boiler reports. Koya says the Vanua GIS will enable organizations to share data and respond more effectively and essentially and make it easier for all components of our nation to function as a better team. The Vanua GIS web portal is a platform for the sharing of data sets, the sets of information that various organizations collect and use to keep in paper form. Now all that information can be assembled digitally in web, one web portal and be accessed by authorized users. And with a click of a button, it will enable organizations to share the data. Just Special Information Management Director Akata Takala has urged relevant stakeholders to continuously update the platform. Vanua JS is a product we can proudly say it's ours, as it will act as government's repository for geospatial information, updated by the data custodians and managed by the Ministry of Lands and Mineral Resources. I therefore request your continued support through your various roles and capacities to provide and manage data to sustainably maintain Vanua GIS. Koi has also urged all stakeholders to make use of the technology that is now available to put Fiji in the best possible position for weather future events. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. A study has shown that more Fijians, both young and old, are suffering from lifestyle diseases such as obesity and malnutrition. This was revealed by Dr. Simeli Tukana, who says women play a key role in reducing these non-communicable diseases. Ellen Stahls reports. Speaking at a workshop for women of the Seventh-day Adventist Church today, National Advisor for Non-Communicable Diseases Dr. Isimeli Tukana highlighted the crucial role women play in society. Though not published as yet, the National Nutrition Survey shows children in Fiji are suffering from malnutrition, obesity and micronutrient deficiency. But now the challenge is now mother is going to work mm. and now father is hitting mother and child. And these are the kind of uh, challenges we have to talk about and see if we can come to the, the mother to me is still the most important stakeholder. All the medical statistics in terms of NCD, it's pointing towards the women and the nurturing of children from the family, whether you talk CD or NCD. All the statistics are pointing that way. The role of women have also been linked to the battle against NCDs. And NCDs, yes, if you train women well, of course, they would know what to do, how to serve the families on the healthy food, so that can be a prevention of this uh, disease that we now have in Fiji. Chief guest at the event, Assistant Minister for Women, Vina Batnaga, also challenged the group to remember their self-worth and stay positive. They have to start changing the mindset of themselves first, ourselves first. If you don't think a good of yourself or you don't realize you were, then nobody will. The three-day workshop aims to empower women and adolescent girls 
in totality. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Now with the latest in sports, here's Jamie. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening in sports after the break. And Lotte Racing are laid to rest today. This and more coming up. My name is Siobhan. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Milti FM. Kyunki Milti FM is number one in music. Milti FM is hot. I am Suresh Chand. I am Suresh Chand. I am Suresh Chand. I am Suresh Chand. Mirchi FM Mujhe must kar deti I am Viren from Zambula Mirchi FM is hot My name is Rizwan Khan Hi And my name is Mama Sufyan Bato Bahe Mirchi, and Mirchi FM, FM is hot. hot My name is Vishal Maharaj I am Mirchi FM Mirchi FM is hot Mirchi FM is hot Mirchi FM is hot Mirchi FM is hot Mirchi FM Vodafone flying Fijians coach John McKee has made four changes to the starting lineup that will face Japan on Sunday Penny Ravai starts in the front row instead of Kampizi Mafu, who has been ruled out due to a broken arm. Lok Nemir Songheta replaces Api Ratunia, Ratunia Rawa, who has been relegated to the bench. And halfback Nicola Matawalu makes his return to the run on side with Ben Volavola, who was dropped from the test match last week. Levan Mbotia, who last played for Fiji against Uruguay at last year's World Cup, is the only new replacement. Botia will combine with Albert Vulivuli in the midfield, while Nemani Nandolo and Metu Sela Talimbula are on the wings. Kini Murumuribalu has been retained in the fullback's position, missing the cut in the 23-member squad. I'm Benito Masilevu and Aseli Tikurutuma. Meanwhile, coach John McKee is confident that Levani Mbotia will have no problems transitioning back into Test Rugby. Having only returned recently from injury, the lethal centre has been given the green light by the Flying Fijians' management. Personal Prasad has more. He wasn't with the group originally, you know, he's... Family and friends of the late Lotera Singer gathered today at the Suva Civic Centre to pay their last respects to the Red Rock Rugby Club coach. Rasinga, who passed away on Sunday night at the Colonial War Memorial Hospital following a short illness, was well known for his work in developing a number of local players who later went on to represent Fiji in Sevens Rugby. Some of his greatest finds include Sireli Mbombo, Penning Onimeke and Sasa Vermalua. Condolence messages from the wider Fiji rugby fraternity continue to pour in for the man considered one of Fiji's top coaches. At his funeral service today, the Nasino Rugby President commended Rasinga for his immense contribution to Fijian rugby. I'll be speaking on behalf of rugby in general. I think we all know about Rasinga's life. He's someone that gave his time, his resources, and his mind and soul in the development of rugby for our youth, spiritually and physically. Never once he complained. Never once he was sick or took a weekend off. Or holidays, he doesn't know holidays. The only time he rests is when he goes to play rugby or when he's going to church. Very tough guy. Rasinga is uh, survived by his wife, five children and four grandchildren. The Fiji under-20 rugby side has a lot to play for when they take on the Cook Islands tomorrow. The team was demoted from the Tier 1 division in 2014 and a win tomorrow will be a step closer to qualifying for the World Rugby Under-20 Trophy next year. Basnil Prasad reports. The challenge has already been laid down and the Fiji and the 20s are ready to take on their Pacific rivals. They'll uh, come, come on strong, uh, but uh, we'll be ready. We'll uh, try to hold our defence and uh, play a little bit of more games, but uh, yeah, we're ready for them uh, tomorrow. The young brigades went through a captain's run early this morning. There is no doubt that the pressure is on for the baby flying Fijians, who are not taking the cooks for granted. Uh, really important for us, uh, especially for the Fiji rugby, because uh, we're trying to take uh, Fiji rugby to the next level, the under-20 Fiji rugby to the next level, trying to go back to the Tier 1 uh, World Cup trophy. So we're just taking it step by step. A win against the Cook Islands will be an advantage in the build-up to meeting Tonga next month. The aim is to get through this ocean here, please. Uh, but uh, tomorrow is the day that uh, we will play against the Cook Islands. We know it will be a hard game. The winner of the Oceania Trophy will seal a place in the World Junior Trophy Championships, where Fiji finished third last year. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Vodafone Fiji 7's captain Osea Kolini Sao believes his team has what it takes to defend the World Series title. However, Kolini Sao says they will have to be at their very best if they want to defend the Dubai 7's title for a third year next week. He adds with a good mixture of experience and young players, 
Fiji will be a hard team to stop if it's on top of its game. It is a good side and uh, the young players in it and players coming back to really and uh, wise. They just shows the hunger they have and they're willing to work hard and uh, we have the experience of uh, the boys that played in uh, Rio which will help out a lot with the uh, new boys and uh, it's going to be an exciting tournament. Fiji will play their first pool game at 7.52 p.m. next Friday against Canada before taking on Wales at 11.47 p.m. then Argentina at 4.48 on Saturday morning. You can watch the entire tournament live on FBC TV. Six local boxers will represent Fiji tomorrow in bouts against Nauru at the Old Gymnasium in Laudala Bay, Suva. Coach Napoleon Taumo Epeau says they are expecting a tough fight from the opponents but is confident that they will make the nation proud. Taumo Epeau says training has been on track and these fights will enable them to analyze each local boxer's performance and see things they need to improve on. Some of the boxers who will feature this Saturday include Olympian Winston Hill who will fight, fight in the 75-kilogram category Joe Ravundi, as well as Sebastian Singh and his brother Nathan Singh. That's it from Sports This Evening. It's back to Jackie now with business. The Fiji National Provident Fund's members' balance grew by 3.1% to $4.4 billion from $4.2 billion last year despite a payout of $275.5 million for Tropical Cyclone Winston withdrawal assistance. This was announced by FMPF Chief Operating Officer Chochi Karoi today, while announcing a net operating profit of $331.6 million for the financial year ended 30th June 2016. That is an increase of $67 million over last year's figure of $265.1 million. Karoy says the continued demonstration of the fund's improved performance reinforces FMPF's role as the social and economic anchor for Fiji. He says the processing and injection of around 3% of the gross domestic product provided the much-needed stimulus for economic activity. He added it helped rebuild confidence in the Fijian economy by allowing FMPF members to help themselves and their families recover from the damage sustained from Tropical Cyclone Winston. Most areas of Fiji saw sunny, experienced, humid conditions today. Ba was the warmer centre at 33 degrees, while Suva followed at 32. For tomorrow, clear skies will allow another sunny, humid day, although some areas can expect brief showers. And our further outlook, we're looking further on to Sunday. It is expected to start off dry with sunny spells. However, rain is forecast for northern and eastern areas of the country in the afternoon. At sea, northeast to southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. And recapping the main stories for tonight, directive given to prioritize water projects in the north as water carting is costing government too much. Violence against women, a health pandemic, says EU ambassador to the Pacific, Andrew Jacobs, and assurances of no more technical disruptions for sugar mills next year. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question now, and this week we are asking... Are you happy to see Choweli Lutumailangi back in the National Sevens fold? To answer, visit our FBC website. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was news for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Ni the manda. Radio Fiji One, Nando Moivitin, Bonga and Vienna.